We are in section one, introduction to change enablement. The exam syllabus for this topic will be to understand the key concepts of the practice. Among others, it will include the purpose of the practice, certain concepts or terms such as change, change model, standard change, emergency change, change authority, and also the various practice success factors and the key metrics associated with each one of them. We begin with the purpose and the three premises of this practice. The purpose of the change enablement practice, you would have also noted that in the ITIL foundation training or exam is to maximize the number of successful service and product changes by ensuring that the risks have been properly assessed. Also authorizing changes to proceed and managing the change schedule. So there are various things here. First of all, the number of successful changes have to be maximized and that can happen by ensuring three things, that the risks have been properly assessed and also then approving the changes to proceed after the risks have been assessed and then also managing a change schedule. This practice actually aims to ensure that the changes to the services and their components are controlled and that they meet the organization's change related needs. The authorized changes or approved changes should enable the desired outcomes. Please note this carefully that the outcomes of the change are also important apart from the outputs of the change. And these should meet the organization's requirements regarding the change throughout uh, and throughput, such as the number of changes made, the speed of the changes being implemented or realized, and the risk management associated with the change. Which means this practice has to be flexible and agile because modern organizations are agile and flexible. There are three premises of this practice. The first one is the changes are planned and realized in the context of value streams, which means this practice is integrated into the value streams and ensures that the changes are effective, safe and timely in order to meet the stakeholders' expectations of this practice as well as the value stream. We will be looking into what value streams this practice supports. For example, it supports incident management. It supports, supports release management and so on. The second point here is that the practice does not aim to unify all the changes planned and carried out in an organization into one big picture. Uh, because in a digital environment, hundreds of changes may be happening simultaneously. Therefore, it may be impossible or even not required to get one big picture of all the changes occurring. Lastly, here we see the practice should focus on balancing effectiveness, throughput, compliance and risk control for all changes in the defined scope. So it's clear as is that statement in particular. What are the benefits of the change enablement practice? We begin with the benefits to the service provider. It gives them improved visibility of the end-to-end -end value streams. It gives them improved risk management capabilities improved ability to respond to new situations or novel situations and improved security and compliance and adherence to, uh, to the audit standards. For the service consumer, it is about improved speed of moving from ideas to working solutions, improved speed in delivering return on investment from change services, reduced negative impact on services and service components and reduced negative impacts on the user. In the exam, you may have questions on benefits. So, Sometimes you need to remember them. Of course, you have to understand them as well. For example, if the question was uh, improved risk management capabilities is a benefit for whom? Is it for the service provider or is it a benefit for the service consumer? You would have to remember all that. So note this carefully. Think yourself from a consumer perspective and from a provider perspective to automatically acknowledge the benefits for a consumer or a provider. And also remember maybe a couple of them so that you don't make mistakes in the exam. Changes, these are needed in all business situations. But before I talk about this picture, we need to understand what is a change. A change is the addition, modification, or removal of anything that could have a direct or indirect effect on services. Note that the exam is not only theory, but also application. We'll be also learning those things as well here. 
So for example, an application may have to be upgraded or there could be some other situation um, and all those forms, examples of changes. So this practice, in fact, helps to build and maintain an organizational environment that supports creating intended outputs and achieving intended out outcomes. If changes do not occur, there will be no new outputs and therefore no new outcomes. So this practice needs to balance the, the various or varying and even conflicting requirements and expectations from various stakeholders. So what it does is it makes sure that the expected value is understood from the viewpoint of and by all stakeholders which means we are actually focusing on the, or uh, looking at the principle of focus on value. Then the practice also considers the stakeholders interest in transparency and communications at the right level and in the right format to track the progress of value enabled by the changes. Not just the technical details because many stakeholders are not interested in the technical details. Also, it is important to track and respond to the unintended negative and positive effects of changes on stakeholders and their objectives that are not necessarily directly linked to the changes in question. Sometimes a change might lead to another benefit which was not expected. For example, it may increase the user base because the application is working even better. Then lastly, keep in mind the importance of those technical details, of course, for the success of the changes uh, from the execution, measurement and continual improvement point of view, even though I, I earlier mentioned that some stakeholders do not need to know the technical details. So it is important that Changes are worked from a value perspective, from an output and outcome perspective, that the negative impacts are minimized or even eliminated. And there is good tracking and reporting about the changes in the right way to the appropriate stakeholders. And in some cases, the technical details should not be given out to everybody, even though technical details will be important for the planning and execution of the change. And so if the changes are implemented with precision, technically, but they don't enable the desired outcomes, for example, better business functioning, uh, then they fall short of expectations. Also, sometimes changes have unintended outcomes, like negative impact on users, service downtime, degradation, destabilization. So it may not be possible to avoid these outcomes, but they should be controlled as much as possible. And changes you might have experienced as well. There are many approaches and methods uh, each approach and method will have its own risk uh, when you uh, plan and implement a change. For example, software changes uh, happen nowadays through frequent and regular deployments of new features and modifications. If you have, if you are already uh, using a DevOps uh, kind of uh, principles approach or environment, then you would know better on that. Now, DevOps, uh, you need not know that for the exam. Um, and uh, since I'm talking about this, let me extend that a bit more continuous integration, continuous delivery or CI, CD, which comes from DevOps and which is used quite a lot in iterative agile methods. Uh, also um, bring in a lot of changes at a rapid speed in agile organizations. Whereas physical infrastructure, changes might be happening more slowly, which will require a more staged or waterfall approach. And sometimes changes may be run as projects. Uh, it can become an elaborate effort to do a change in an environment, which will become a project or a program of its own and wherein you will need to apply project management techniques and controls. So uh, the practice should be adaptive so that the various approaches can be used for the change um, planning and implementation. And uh, when we talk about the value streams later on, you will see that uh, how the change enablement uh, contributes to different types of value streams. For example, release management or even the incident management or uh, problem management and so on. Now, uh, to this picture here, what we mean here is um, uh, the changes are possible in all business situations from business as usual to catastrophic. You see at the left side, the business as usual, and then we have the maintenance and normal service delivery that is, and then it moves towards changes for new service requirements and changes necessary for minor incidents, changes required in order to meet regulatory requirements which are emerging or for major incidents, changes may be needed. Then sometimes we need organizational changes which is dealt with in uh, the OCM practice, organization change management, but sometimes the OCM also triggers changes to services and products. Therefore, we have this shown here as well. Then changes may be required during disasters, 
and also during catastrophic um, situations. We'll be discussing more about uh, different types of changes in different situations uh, as we progress through this uh, course. So if you look at the extreme left here, business as usual, these are usually predictable, whereas there is less uncertainty. Whereas on the right side, the extreme one, the catastrophic, have the highest levels of risks or uncertainty. And of course, in the middle, we see changes uh, having various levels of complexity, uh, predictability, etc. So it's important to standardize changes and automate them where uncertainty is low, uh, where the risks are low, so that the cost and uh, of the change can be reduced and the changes can be faster. Now, I, though I mentioned standardization, be careful to note that this practice is not about standardizing the changes. Yeah, so. Uh, it's not like one single method for all changes. That is what I mean here. And there will be checklists, templates, and standardized ways of working uh, for each of these situations. That's what I meant. And not one standard approach for all these situations. And uh, some changes could have uh, uh, adverse impact. And some will have less uh, of the impact or more impact. And if the risks are well managed, then the services can be restored quickly during a failure so that there is minimal or no negative impact on customers. And those can be handled using standard procedures. So, and those happen in the standard change. For example, uh, standard replacement of hardware, uh, older hardware. There is no need to for somebody to approve the change. It can just happen uh, on its own as a standard change request where uh, the risks are well managed, pre-understood, pre-approved uh, change that is. And even if something goes wrong there, there is sufficient preparation and understanding of the situation and uh, nothing uh, will go wrong. Uh, 